You know, we, we got different guys that show up and they do things. He's one of the best third basemen in the big leagues, and he's only 24. This is Esther in Sports. Kyle Tucker belts in a three-run homer and a five-run third to help Houston beat Texas 7-3. Detroit's seven-game winning streak is over after they lost to Kansas City 5-3. Nelson Cruz homered in his Tampa Bay de- debut as the Rays beat Cleveland 10-5. It was Minnesota 5-4 over L.A., Seattle 4, Oakland 3. In the National League, Philadelphia top Atlanta 5-1. Philly starting and winning pitcher Zach Wheeler, who allowed one run over seven innings, says he wanted to stop their losing streak. When you lose three in a row, you need to win. I mean, you know, you need to come in here and pitch a good game. Keep runs off the board and make it easy as possible for our guys. Cincinnati beat St. Louis 6-5. It was San Diego 5-2 over Miami. Chicago 8, Arizona 3, Pittsburgh 6, San Francisco 4, Colorado 9. The LA Dodgers 6 and 10 innings. In Italy action, in the battle of division leaders, Milwaukee crushed the White Sox 7-1. The Mets beat the Blue Jays 3-0. It was Baltimore 6-1 over Washington. The first gold medal of the Tokyo Games has been handed out to China in the women's 10-meter air rifle. With SRN Sports, I'm Patrick Foss. This is Coach Big C, and you're listening to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch on WKL 1450. Welcome back to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch. Thanks for making us part of your Saturday morning. I want to go right to the phone lines because I don't want to keep them waiting any longer. We're going to go to the voice of Coney Island, George Shea. Let's go to the phone lines. Hey, George, how are you, my friend? Good, how are you? Oh, it's an honor to have you on. I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely, my pleasure, and I'm sorry for the confusion last week. How's everything going? It's going, it's going. We're uh, we're still talking Coney Island here. I I know I joke with you every year you come on, but I'm probably one of the only shows this way locally that uh, people around here get on me. They say, but you love talking about. It. I said I absolutely love talking about it. So <laughs> it's an honor to have you on. So what what was it like to have all the fans back this year? I, I have to tell you, it was uh, it, it was so it was so much fun, and you know we we did it in a new location. We always do it on the corner of Surf and Stillwell, right yep. at the restaurant. But we, because of planning, which is to say, you could not at when when we were planning it, we were still in the restrictions were all still in place. So we did it in a uh, in the minor league ball club, right two blocks down. And that was just dynamite, right? It actually made it easier. People, you know, people enjoyed it. They could grab a, a, a beer. They could they could get a, the bathroom. It was actually a really clear view for a lot of people. So it actually worked out really well. And then we just had a gorgeous day. It's like today in New York City, I just, you know, it would be hard to get a better day than the 4th of July. It's, it's beautiful today. It was beautiful then. And it was just a perfect environment. And then um, it was an extremely exciting event because... Joey, who was not going to be beaten, it turned out, by anybody, um, broke his record, but only at the last second. So it was, it was really quite dramatic, a great event. You know, and, and we'll talk about, about Joey here, and I want to kind of go back in time a little bit uh, for when you and your brother got this thing started. Did you ever think that this event now would be as big as it is? Uh, no, 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 no. And And nor was there any plan, right? So it's not... It's not as if we had a thing, you know, let's make the next, um, you know, professional sports or entertainment platform, and this is how we'll do it. We just we just, we just, just thought it was funny and interesting and dramatic, and, and it just sort of grew. So it, it's, it's actually a tribute to, you know, do something you think is interesting or funny or, or whatever, and, and it will take care of itself. In this case, it did. You know, when we talk about Joey and, you know, eating 76, you know, I keep saying it every year, there's nobody close. I mean, I know George, Jeff Esper was there at 50, which still isn't close. I mean, how long can Joey keep doing this? You know, it's a, it's a really interesting question, and he's, he's truly a great champion, right? And he's taken on this role as, as a kind of an American hero. From a sports promotion standpoint, you know, you'd rather have um, – a bunch of competition and going back and forth each year, right? You don't want the Patriots to win every single year, right? You just don't. I mean, from the the league doesn't. If you're a Patriots fan, you do, and and certainly if you're a Joey's fan, you do. But uh, so there's a, but he's not being going to be beat, you know, by anybody that I know, and that just is what it is. And and so we go by what happens. We're not making it up, and and he's going to keep winning unless someone um, can can come out of uh, you know maybe an international competitor, maybe someone else from Japan, but he's just unbeatable right now, so it would seem. 
and it's just amazing to go back. You know, I was looking through some of the numbers back in 2001 when when Kobayashi hit 850 dogs, which, which doubled, I think, his previous record. And just to see from 50 now all the way to 76. I mean, this event has changed so much. Uh, over the years with, with, with all the competitors. Because there's a lot of, you know, new competitors, some new up-and-coming competitors in this. And uh, just to see how um, those numbers have changed drastically is something about this event. Yeah, you know, one one thing to keep in mind, and there's no one who could ever say that Kobayashi was not a phenomenon and that he did not, you know, transform the, the landscape of, of, of the competition. But he aged 50... And then after, when he was sort of going back and forth with Joey, you know, 60, whatever it was, in 12 minutes. So right. Joey is now eating 76 in 10. And so, I mean, if you really think about that, the, the <laughs> it's in two fewer minutes, it's really something. And there's just no one, Kobayashi included, who could even come close. doesn't diminish what Kobayashi did then. But it's just the fact of the matter now. So, you know, yeah, I mean, Joey, but, but for me, what is, is is very important, obviously, is the introductions and the positioning. And Joey is such a great hero um, and a kind of a regular American guy. Um, and there's something very powerful about it. And, it, and I think he connects to people. And uh, it's it just, a, you know, so it, it's a pleasure to work with in the sense of, He's not a LeBron type. He's he's just a regular kind of guy type, and it, it, it makes it a lot of fun. And I know we always talk about your introductions, and uh, I, I actually have played a lot of your introductions here uh, on the show, but I know you've talked about it and uh, the preparation that goes in because everybody assumes that you're reading off of a teleprompter, and I know you're not. We know you're not here. But how much time really do you take to get ready for that event? It's it's a, it's a very interesting question. I mean, more than you might think, because I memorize it and um, and 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 I write it and stuff like that. But you know, what I have learned is it used to be that I would just be working out, right? So the adrenaline you get when you're working out, and I'd put my mind onto the contest and imagining it in the in the introductions and sort of like that adrenaline that comes sort of drove like some ideas, and then you write down if you think an idea is good, and then you develop it, right? I don't know why, but that is not how I do it lately. Maybe I'm either I'm not exercising enough or, or I'm not feeling interesting in my brain. So I actually have been sitting down the last couple of years and like going, okay, where do we go with this? You know, it would much more like a, like if you're just writing something, right? Like it's a writing project. But, but and I always thought to myself, that won't work, right? You're not inspired. It's not true. I think the the introduction that I did for Joey this year was probably tighter than than anyone I've ever done. It may not, you know, some people may not think it's the best, but you know, so so I just sit down and I do the work, and you know, it's like, okay, what do I want to say about Joey? What does he, you know, what does he strike me as? Like, what's the defining characteristic that you know? And then how do you present that in a way that will really drive energy? And and you know, and and it, and it works, but you know, the the it, there's always a mix of introductions, and you do want some funny ones and some stuff like that. I'm not sure. Uh, you, you may have to be inspired for humor, right? Because it's hard to sit for hard for me to sit down and write something like a joke. Now, you, in, in some of the other sports, you know, you talk about the training, the off season. Um, you know, for for competitive eaters, what, what goes into an off season training? Like, are there certain routines? Is it swallowing techniques is an increase in stomach capacity like what are some things that go into place in the off season for these guys well i mean and and, and i think and certainly you're right they do do that and i think it largely probably happens during the season right like so they usually and, and that's not true this year because of covid this last year but you know they'd have a bunch of events right they'd have 30 different events to go to over the year and they'd sort of gear up but you're exactly right the the things that they do, it's about how do you manage getting the food in your mouth in an efficient way. And it sounds ridiculous, right? But if you're going to eat 76 hot dogs or even 50 or 40 or 35, um, how do you do that in 10 minutes, right? Like just how are you managing the the, the, the sort of logistics of, of moving that you know food around? 
and, and eating it. So that's a really big thing, and Joey talks a lot about that, how that process really was critical to enable him to do what he does. Um, and But obviously stomach capacity, which would come from, you know, doing the event. And, um, and, and, and you know, it's an interesting thing, and I've always thought with Jeffrey, who's Jeffrey Esper, whom you mentioned, and who's a great guy, um, I think he, he's beaten Joey like nine times. That, that, that I can remember. And we did a bunch of events for um, DraftKings over the winter, who yep. was the sponsor on the fourth. And Jeffrey beat Joey twice. Um, or, or he beat him once and then Matt Stoney beat him twice. Like, uh, but, he, you know, he would have been ahead of Joey in, in that case, who would have been third in the other one. So it's like Joey is beatable and beatable by Jeffrey. But I don't think Jeffrey responds in the same way to the pressure and the crowd as Joey does. And it's that. You know, I'm not a huge sportsman, but I'm sure there are all kinds of discussion on like who's a gamer and who's not. And Joey is a gamer, right? So he's like he he goes up. You know that that tension and anxiety enhances his performance, and I think it might you know get in the way with with Jeffrey a little. Yeah, I always say because I'm a I'm a former uh, football coach and football player at uh, Fordham University, and I always say that. Athletes, I think, are built differently, but there are certain athletes, you know, you mentioned LeBron James, the Michael Jordans, and, and, and I always say Jaws. When the bright lights go on and it's crunch time, the, cr- the crowd's behind you, he's just got a different motor to him that just kind of, you know, kicks on and really separates him from some of the other competitors. It's just like another gear. Yeah, and that's, you think about it, um, who's the guy in the, I used to watch a lot of the, the Knicks, and and the guy from Indianapolis and uh, who was so good and would always like beat the Knicks, but Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller. Miller. Yeah, Reggie Miller. Right. So, you know, like, and I specifically remember a famous game in like <laughs> they got like three seconds left and they get nine points or something, you know, because of all because of Reggie Miller and and it's like and he just had that right and I think Joey has that um, and I was a I was a competitive athlete in high school and college and I really didn't have that you know I didn't have that. Like I got anxious, it was anxious, you know. So, but Joey does, and um, and I think that's one of the things why you're not seeing the others um, sort of closer. Although, if you remember, a couple of years ago, Carmen Sincotti, yep. really nice guy, was at 64 when Joey was at 74, and that was Carmen's second year. Pretty, pretty impressive. Like so, so it's not like it's impossible. Nothing is impossible, but right now it's not happening. So what's uh, what's George Shea do for fun time when you're not working? Uh, you know what? Actually, I um, I uh, am a self-taught um, painter. Like I'm trying to teach myself how to paint for a long time, and I I, I am a horrible. <laughs> That's what I do. I mean, horrible. It's embarrassing. I bring some of the the paintings I do into into my office, and my and my employees just like literally go, "Oh my god!" And uh, but that's what I do. That's what I do. Well, listen, George, I can't thank you enough. I love having you on. You're one of my favorite guests, if not the favorite guest on, on my show here on Saturday mornings. And everybody laughs because they say, what's a bucket list for you? And I said, someday I'm going to sit there, I'm going to watch the event, or someday maybe, who knows, I'll call the event someday. So I can't thank you enough. So listen, when you when you want to, just reach out and we'll get you the the best experience possible, especially if we're – if we're back in the um, in MCU Park next year, where we have suites, and it's like we, we'll take care of you. It'd be great to have you if you want to come down. And and, and if it happens, we'll hope for a day like uh, like this past Fourth of July. Awesome! I will definitely take you up on that. I can't thank you enough, George. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Great. Have a great day. Thanks. Yep. You got it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm in a VIP <laughs> suite next year. <laughs> I'm going. That's it. You know, when you speak of that event, though, I know the surf in Stillwell. Like, you can't yep. beat that. Yep. But it was a good event at the at the baseball park. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it seemed was. like it was a lot easier. There's more people inside. So maybe that's the new uh, the new venue or something. Maybe they do some type of pregame thing right. from surf in Stillwell. Like